Welcome to APCUG's Wednesday Workshops, where we get together in the middle of the week and learn more about technology. Today, we have a new presenter who I'm very excited to welcome. She will be here along with co-host Bill James and our lady with the questions and the answers, Judy Tallur. Heather Cleary is a media and community outreach coordinator for the Better Business Bureau, serving Greater Kentucky and South Central Indiana. She joined the Bureau in September of 1999 after working as a radio news reporter in Kentucky. Heather served as a volunteer arbitrator for the BBB for 10 years before coming on board at the BBB full time. For more than 100 years, the nonprofit International Association of Better Business Bureaus, the IABBB, has been the leader in advancing marketplace trust. IABBB is the network hub for BBBs in the US, Canada, and Mexico. And like BBBs, the IABBB is dedicated to fostering honest and responsive relations between business and consumers, instilling consumer confidence and advancing a trustworthy marketplace for all. Heather is a Louisville native, graduated from Eastern Kentucky University, the Colonels, and she and her husband, Bill, live in Lexington, Kentucky. She is here today to help us get up to speed to spot, avoid, and report scams. So Heather, welcome to APCUG's Wednesday workshop, and I will ask you to unmute, and then you can take things over. Here we go. Okay, so we're talking a little bit about the Better Business Bureau, and the scam tracker site where people can report the scams. And the scam tracker does help people avoid scams. They say, I wonder if this is a scam, so they get on there and look it up. And as you see here, at least 40% of the people reported that they visited this site just to see if what was happening to them was a scam. A lot of people turn online, as you computer users know. And then of course, another 21% said it have helped them avoid losing money to a scam. And that's what it's all about. We wanna help people uh, avoid that from happening to them we did, were able to help prevent consumers and businesses from losing $21 million mm. to fraud in 2022. Businesses get targeted too by all of these scams, and many of them do happen online. Then there's why people report the scams to begin with. About half of them, because they want to warn other people. People contact BBBs all the time, indicating, hey, I uh, want to let other people know that this happened and not let it hit anybody else. And then others were hoping it would bring justice, you know, catch the guy, which is nice to say, but does not always happen because these people are usually overseas. They're hiding behind layers of technology and servers and whatnot. And, you know, even the FBI and the FTC and people like that will tell you they are hard pressed to find all these people, which is why these online scams are so successful. So this year's findings, you can help share this with other folks. This is available on our website at bbb.org. There were 40,000 reports, as I indicated earlier, and almost half of them did report a financial loss of some kind. Now you see here, the median loss we showed was $171. That's median. Some folks might lose 40 bucks. Some folks have lost you know, thousands of dollars to different scams, depending on what it is. So it continues to be a serious problem. Now, we figure susceptibility and monetary loss as part of the risk. And percentage of the reports that actually included a dollar loss were down from 2021, but the amount people lost went up a bit from 2021. So maybe fewer loss, but they lost a little more. And that's not a direction we want to see it go in. Then, of course, there's the non-financial impacts, you know, lost time. You waste a lot of time with this stuff. Some people really are rattled by some of these things. You know, they don't feel, you know, they're stressed out by what this may have caused them to happen. That's almost half of the people said that. Some lost personal information. And we talk about ID theft a lot in the Better Business Bureau because you do end up sharing information with the con artists and then they can use that to steal your other information, open lines of credit, you know, the magic keys, your social security number, your date of birth. Then, of course, you know, if you get into too much of a financial problem, you can lose your credit health can can go down. And, of course, your potential earnings go down as well. 
So here's the formula they use, exposure times susceptibility times monetary loss. You know, how likely are you to be targeted? And if so, what are your odds of losing the money if you were exposed or targeted? And then what is the magnitude of your loss? And that's the formula they use to develop these, the risk index. Here's the magic list everybody's waiting for. Number one, online purchases. This continues, it was number one last year or in 2021. And this is not surprising considering that it was during the pandemic and everybody was shut down and you did a lot of your shopping and buying products online, have them delivered to your home. Now, employment scams went up a spot, which could also have something to do with the pandemic. It was at number three the year before. Those are always in the top 10 where people get fooled into taking jobs they're offered online. Uh, they're even listed in hiding on sites like uh, Career Builder and, and Monster and all those sorts of things. But they are usually things listed as an innocuous sounding thing, uh, you know, quality manager, product quality manager, something like that. But it turns out you're doing something like shipping packages that someone's shipped to you. You open it up, repackage it, send it off, make sure everything's there. That just puts you as a cog in a long line of, of other people that are involved with this where the con artists are having you sort of launder, if you will, kind of like money laundering, sending it along and being part of a scam. Cryptocurrency, yet again, another computer-related thing, digital-related. I still have a hard time wrapping my head around what cryptocurrency is all about. But the popularity of it did uh, stay up there. And then home improvement scams, uh, off the beaten path of the using the online, because, you know, that continues to be people's largest investment, their home. And it's very easy to lose money to an unscrupulous contractor, especially now this time of year, we do urge you to check with your local BBB on businesses you might be using to do any work around your home. Advanced fee loan scams. Those have been around forever. They used to just run out of Canada targeting people in the U.S. where you are told that you can borrow this money, but you got to pay a fee up front, which is against federal law in the United States. These particularly target people who don't have very good credit or might be desperate for a loan, and then they lose money to these scams. Then investment scams. You might think that might be up there also with the cryptocurrency, a different kind of investment. And that uh, dropped down one spot to number six. And then the romance scams. This is a serious one. It zoomed up. From, it was at number 14 the last time because more and more people were connecting online. Now, these work, if you're not familiar with it, where you are basically groomed by the scammer. They meet you online, generally like on Facebook. They might lure you to Google Hangout to speak with them more. And ultimately, they will milk you dry for money and everything else. Some of them will take weeks doing this or even months gaining your trust. And it's very easy for a lonesome person to fall for this sort of thing. Now, what really burns us is many times some of them will use the excuse that they're overseas. I'm in the military, so I can't meet you in person. You know, pegging on everybody's uh, desire to want to support you know, our military. So those are pretty serious and they're still going on. You have to be really cautious of that. The government grant scam still holding steady at number eight. People still believe there's a government grant out there for them. This one has been around for years. And often people will get hooked into that one through social media. We hear from people at our BBB, and I know others do, where they've been messaged through Facebook or something like that from someone they know, but actually it turns out it's a, a con artist who hacked their friend's account telling them, hey, I saw your name on a list of grants for uh, seniors who need to have some help or something like that. Why don't you check and see if yours is there? Ultimately, that just leads you into sending money to get an alleged grant that isn't coming. The government will tell you they're not just giving grants to anybody like that. Phishing scams, which is if you are an emailer, you know what those are. You get these uh, emails that look like they're from somebody you know or an agency you know, but it's uh, really somebody just trying to steal other information from you and trick you by letting you think that they're somebody else. And then ha, tech support scams, of all things. Those have been around a long time, and I'm hoping you all have discussed this sort of thing throughout your Wednesday workshops. We will often hear from senior citizens at our bureau 
who maybe aren't as tech savvy. Maybe they have a computer in the house just for, you know, to talk to the grandkids online or, or, or something like that. But uh, it used to be that someone would call and pretend to be with Microsoft or Apple and your computer's about to crash. There are viruses all over it. We can fix it for you. And people would believe it. And there are programs, as you know, where you can share screen or share control of the computer. And they would let the con artists take control of it and allegedly helping them by installing special software. In reality, they're installing more viruses and possibly stealing your personal information. Sometimes they end up freezing the whole thing. These can also happen if a pop-up comes up. You're just surfing along and suddenly a pop-up says, you know, warning, your computer is at risk of, of crashing, blah, blah, blah. Call this number. It's the same thing. It's just a different and more efficient way for them to get a hold of you. So that's still up there in the top 10 as well. You see back to the online purchase scams. Um, that's almost a third of all the scam reports. And most of those people reported losing money. And it's really... I got to tell you, it's just from personal experience here. We'll get people call and we say, or email, and we'll say, well, how did you find out about this product you were trying to buy? Well, I saw it on Facebook Marketplace. And anybody can, you know, set up a page on Facebook and offer to sell something. Doesn't mean they're legit. Many times when our staff would look up the website that somebody bought something from, turns out the web, I say, have you clicked on contact us? Where is this company located? Well, I don't know. Well, if we find a contact us, sometimes we'll click on it and find out that they're overseas. And good luck. You know, they're in China or Yugoslavia or somewhere. You won't be able to get your money back or, or your product. So it's a, it's a continual problem with buying things online. The employment scams, you know, I talked about what some of those can be. And those are one of the larger money losers because you invest some money into it sometimes. You shouldn't have to pay to work for one thing. And it is the riskiest for that age group of 18 to 34, younger folks that might be looking for employment, maybe having a harder time. That includes students. And unfortunately, again, the military is targeted by this. The second riskiest scam for the spouses, because as many folks who are in the military, I'll tell you, many of them may be very underpaid for what they do. So any way for them to try to earn extra money to raise their families. And unfortunately, it comes out this way. The cryptocurrency, again, middle age, but it's number three riskiest for the older crowd too, 65 plus, uh, which is very interesting. It may be because they just don't understand it or they thought, well, it's a new way for me to handle. And that's another big money loser. You see $1,100 median dollar loss. That means some people lost more than that. And some of your riskiest scams by age, you kind of see this chart, <clears throat> this chart here, the younger crowd, fell for the employment scams, and just about everybody fell for the online purchase scams. Uh, the cryptocurrency scams are down there at number three, along with some of the other ones. You will see that the 65 and older group maybe didn't lose as much. Some people would assume that a senior citizen might lose more money, you know, because we're going to scam the old folks, but not necessarily. One thing we have seen time and time again is that the older crowd doesn't lose as much as some of the, as some of these other folks because maybe because they're wiser. <laughs> That's what I like to think. And if they do lose money, they do end up losing more. But fewer of them lose it than you know the younger folks. So that's an interesting fact right there. This is what's very interesting to us. The younger crowd is the ones that reported the highest median dollar loss since we've been publishing this thing which not sure why that is, could be just more being online and, and all that sort of thing, but it is. It was an interesting finding, we thought, as far as their exposure and their susceptibility. Maybe they're just acting impulsively. I don't know, but uh, that's, uh, that was a new finding for us this year as well. And even kids, you know, they can get targeted. And you'll see here that most of the time, what parents would report it, it happened on social media. Those kids get out there and they're on Facebook or Instagram or TikTok, the younger crowd, and they can easily get lured into things they do not need to be involved with. You go off a little further down, you see gaming platforms were one. Some of these kids get online and play these games. People, <clears throat> excuse me, people will lurk there and, and try to get their information. Now, here's where they actually engage with people. And not surprisingly, as we've been talking about, our theme through this is on websites. People who had scam, who were scammed, that's where they are engaged, on various websites. The percentage of all the scams of the loss, it was about a third of them. 
followed by social media, as I gave you an example or two a little bit ago. Of course, email. We talked about phishing scams. There are still phone scams out there. More and more people have become aware of the kinds of phone scams, the old-fashioned, this is Publishers Clearinghouse, and you've won. <laughs> Maybe some of you have received that one, and we'll see her, still hear about that one. And Publishers Clearinghouse even has a whole page that they devote to warning people about not falling for that scam. They say, we don't operate that way. You have to have entered to win, and we're just going to send it to you. We're not going to call you and tell you to jump through all these hoops and give us money. Various internet messaging and text messages. Then even online classifieds, in person, and then just some other things. Good old fashioned mail has a small percentage there. So again, websites, online safety, it's important. Just some more uh, contact methods, kind of along the same thing. People were more susceptible online, but you see the dollar amount went up by other methods of the median loss, like by phone and internet and text messaging. So there's just different kinds of ways that people are going to fall for it and lose more money. And then, of course, in person, which not exactly sure, because a lot of the con artists like to scam people with that layer between them or the phone, the Internet. You can't find them. Most of the time, they're overseas somewhere. The payment methods. Many folks have used a credit card. Now, the beauty of credit cards is generally you can dispute a charge if something's gone wrong. Unfortunately, sometimes by the time people realize they've been scammed, it might be too late. That window can close. So you don't want to be giving that credit card information to just anybody. Then online payment systems, you know, Zelle, Venmo, PayPal, uh, all those kinds of things, because there are few, fewer protections there. So that was like the second largest area of where people would lose money. Then, of course, straight debits out of their bank account. Prepaid cards, that's a classic favorite of con artists. Well, go out and get uh, five Apple cards worth $500 each and use this to pay the fee. Why would somebody ask you to pay that way? We've heard numerous scams that tell you to do that. And that alone should just sound really strange. But some people have done it, unfortunately. And you give them the gift cards. They tell you to take a picture of the front and the back, show them the pin. They empty it out. It's just like throwing cash at them. You can't get it back. Then we're going into cryptocurrency checks. Wire transfers are still up there. Western Union, that used to be the classic favorite, but you know, since all these other methods came up, uh, that got shoved down a little bit. Because again, if you wire money, especially with the way MoneyGram is, they can pick it up anywhere, anytime, and you can't get it back. Again, the median dollar loss, credit cards, they lost less. But you know, with the wire transfers, like we talked about, they lost the most, as you see, like Western Union, you can't get it back. And uh, checks, of course, too, that's gone, and your money orders. Those are the larger median losses when it comes to the payment methods for scams. Now, there's just some more, uh, some more comparisons to where the scams are riskiest. Again, online, then phone, then just a small amount in person, which can include postal mail as well. 76% of all the scams reported with a loss were online. I mean, the internet's surely bringing the world together, but it's also making things easier for the con artists. Now, impersonated organizations. This has been a problem in the last few years. You will get emails or phone calls from scammers pretending to be with these particular outfits. Amazon, far and away, their name is used the most. Perhaps you've gotten this call or this email that you've ordered this item. Your Amazon order of insert expensive toy here, you know, a computer, uh, a large screen TV, something that costs $1,000, $2,000. And the money's going to be taken out of your bank account and we will be sending this. If this isn't you, or if you didn't order this, please click here. It leads you off to somebody else who's actually pretending to be with Amazon. Then they put you through these hoops. Well, we'll be sure and put your money back. What's your bank account number? You know, very tricky. Geek Squad. Again, we're in tech support. Another way that, and they will send emails as well. There's something wrong with your computer. They'll pretend to be from Geek Squad. That's not how it operates. Publisher's Clearinghouse, a perennial favorite. We just talked about that. Sometimes people will get things saying they're with the U.S. Postal Service. Norton Virus Protection. Your virus protection has expired. And some people believe it because they don't pay attention to what kind of protection they have on their, on their laptop or their computer if they have it. Which, of course, you would know if you have it or not. Then people pretending to be pay PayPal. Uh, Manuel Franco, I am not familiar with that one. 
Exactly, but it was up there. Then Medicare, and this particularly hits the senior crowd. People will get phone calls saying this is Medicare and uh, we need to have your number to send you a new card or some reason that they can steal your information out of you. And we, of course, warn people that Medicare does not call you unsolicited at all. So don't believe it. Then Walmart, their name will be used. Microsoft, uh, the Indiana Department of Workforce Development, there was just some kind of a strange unemployment email that went out, but it hit a lot of people. So it showed up on our list. McAfee, yet another you know, virus protection outfit. Facebook, Advanced America, we'll see that one with people being told that they own, they owe a big loan that they haven't paid on and you better pay or else. Well, I don't have a loan, you know, uh, but some people would believe it. And then Cash App. So those are the top most impersonated organizations that people know. And of course, the factors that, you know, increase your likelihood of, of losing this money, you know, you're feeling financial distress or you're lonely and you're easily panicked during stressful situations. Sometimes it just seems like it's the perfect storm. Someone will say, well, I answered the phone because... Uh, we had something going on in the family with an emergency and, and they weren't thinking straight and they ended up falling for the scam that was on the phone. So there's any number of ways that people can be led into falling for these things. We tell people, don't be embarrassed about it. Uh, it's, it's not your fault. They're very slick. They're very believable. We want to try to help if we can. You can see this entire report at uh, bbbmarketplacetrust.org. And uh, it, it breaks it down into all sorts of different uh, categories, much like we just talked about. And uh, it's uh, it's interesting. And we put, and we also encourage you to submit any scams. Go to bbb.org. You would see a place on there to report a scam. And we invite you to do that. Uh, your anonymity, we ask you for your information, but your name and info is not put on the website. It helps us tabulate all of this. So, and it all uh, is part of our mission to help people increase their trust, and, you know, use BBB accredited businesses. They're the ones that make it possible for us to conduct things such as this to warn everyone and keep them away from the scams that are out there. So, so that is the end of that presentation. I'm going to stop sharing the screen. And I don't know if you're going to open it for any kinds of questions or anything. I'm open to that. We will check with Judy and see what she might have. Um, I don't have any questions. That was really thorough on what we need to look out for. So with all of our attendees here, I'm going to open it up to uh, one at a time, choose a scam and let us know what we shouldn't do to get yeah. it. Yeah, or if you want to report, you want to ask about something, you're not sure if it's a scam, or if you have a question about the services of the Better Business Bureau, anything like that, I'm, I'm happy to take. And uh, we want you to be able to learn uh, and help everybody else learn about what, we're, what we can do to help. Cool. Richard Durand, unmute yourself, please. I just messed that up because you got to give me a chance to... Sorry. Richard, put your hand up again so I can find you easier. It went to the end of the line. <laughs> no, he's not even there now. I see two participants raising their hand. <laughs> yeah. um, well, I have a friend who recently ordered something online. Mm -hmm. And I checked in with him to uh, see if he had received it yet, because I have a grandson that is getting married. And I thought, what a cool present to give. And she, I thought I would buy one for myself too. And he's very knowledgeable about computers, all things tech stuff. And he said, you know, I think I've been scammed. I uh -oh. think it was a fake website. And he went through the website with a fine tooth comb. I did too. I didn't find anything. But a couple of the pages now are 404. We're not here mm -hmm. anymore. So even though we know a whole bunch of stuff about this, sometimes, you know, it. and to be honest with you, which I think both of us thought at the beginning, it was too good to be true. 
but we were hoping and I mean I cleaned my counter off to have a place for it and everything and that's not going to happen so no matter how much we know about stuff every once in a while you we can. might get hooked with something and it's really unfortunate so Rudy, that that's my share Rudy, yeah. can i go to the head of the line because i'm absolutely the, I'm the victim i wasn't gonna say that that's all right <laughs> uh thank you heathers for uh, your presentation i went on your uh tracker Mm -hmm. And I find that uh, I am not the only one, but there's only one entry. It says online purchase. An ad for the company ran a Instagram. The ad was for Revolution Smart Toaster. I placed the order on March 15, 2023. And um, I received email confirmation. I sent an email about three weeks later asking when the toaster would ship. I did not receive a reply, but did receive notification that it shipped. Since hmm. then, I have received two additional emails requiring what is going on since it has been shipped status without tracking number, and it is the same status today. And my situation appears to be the same. So it said, uh, and it was like um, $29 uh, for, a uh, toaster that is regularly a hundred dollars. Uh. Of course, but wait, well, there's, there's more. If you go on Amazon, that same toaster sells for four hundred dollars. Actually, three hundred thirty-four is the cheapest yeah, one. Change, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, so I, uh, I would say the moral of the story, Bill, is we should both, and everybody else should, check BBB. Yeah, I just want for the signs. Like, for instance, if it's too good to be true pricing. Uh, I have seen this happen with things such as, uh, believe it or not, wedding gowns, prom dresses, you know, expensive gowns. They see it online. It's coming from China. They get it. It's not anything like it was represented to be, but they also got it for a lot less. Another thing, you say you go through a website with a fine-tooth comb. This is one thing I tell folks, too. If you can't, the first thing I do, if I'm going to order something for somebody, I go to contact us. If I find nothing more than an 800 number or nothing more than an email address, goodbye. There's no way to tell where they are. Now, not to say that if there's a complete address listed, that doesn't mean anything too. Because I've looked up on scam sites, we've learned to be scam sites. I've looked up the address and it turns out just to be a, a mail drop type situation. So, and sometimes I've had to pour through terms and conditions to find anything that hints where this business is. And it will say, and this website adheres to and operates by the laws of Lithuania or something like that. And I'm like, yeah, I'm not going to be sh shopping from this bunch. So always do that kind of stuff on the front end to avoid trouble on the back end. Well, this one doesn't give you any of those clues. I mean, it's, you can find a, a foreign entity is all U.S. The um, website works um like it should it mm -hmm. got email responses everything and the and address you, is in new york yeah it's if a, you do have a report like that of a business and it gives an address I mean, you can file a complaint with the better business bureau in the area if it's giving a u.s address of any kind because that would cause the bureau to open a file if we don't have a file on it we're not a uh, government agency businesses aren't uh, required to keep their information but we would open a file on it and process the complaint and that too can help people know that if scam if somebody else looks it up Okay, I'll go on the um, on the um, scam tracker, scam tracker, and put yeah. that information in. Sure, that would be great. So and much. then send me what you what your experience is, and I'll include it in the follow up email. All right, and we'll wrap a bow on this. <laughs> Cynthia, do you have something? Nope, we're going to go. We're going to go to Richard because I cut him off. Oh, where is he? Oh, there he is, Richard. It's your turn. I'm here. Um, well, I, first of all, I want to thank you for the, your presentation, and it was worth waiting for. And second of all, I want to ask about this, since I have the opportunity. Um, uh, well, recently I received a letter from uh, my uh, online, no, uh, mail order pharmacy for that something has been, um, one of my prescriptions has been recalled or something. Okay. Could this be a scam? Uh, I, 
What, what did it want you to do? I mean, what was it advising? Well, you it doesn't do? want me to do anything. I'm so, um, I'm thinking no, but, uh, um, but since you're here, I thought I'd ask. Yeah, sure. Yeah. I mean, it's, I'm, if you're using postal mail and it looks like it came from your prescription outfit, I'm sure they're advising you because anything that's a scam is going to want you to take some kind of a step that could cause you to lose money and whatnot. I mean, if it were to advise you to call your primary care provider to seek another, or it might even give you a link for some organization like the Food and Drug Administration or something along those lines. But I kind of doubt it just based on what you're telling me. That's a that's a new one on me. And if you, another thing, Google can be your friend. If you get something like that, you can Google, you know, recall on whatever the med is. And I bet some news stories pop up that would help lend credence to that. Yeah, that's oh, your first step, Richard. Idea. Google's your friend. All right. Thank you. Cynthia. Sorry, took me a moment to catch up. Um, unfortunately, the more time I have, the more questions I have. I guess the first question would be, if I'm curious about somebody, you've given resources to check online. Is there the ability to call the Better Business Bureau, especially if it's a local one, and talk to somebody sure. and ask questions? Yeah. Yeah, I know our bureau does. And, and again, if you look on uh, BBB.org, and there should be a square further down that says, you know, look for the BBB or, or your your uh, internet pro locator might show for you. Uh, and you just enter in the city of where you live, and a box should pop up. You can click on it, and it will take you to the contact information for that bureau, a way to email them, their address, their hours, and a phone number. Okay. I'm, I'm going to sneak in. Um... Two questions. I live in Grace Lake, Lake County, which is Northern Illinois. Mm -hmm. uh, the county has a workforce development office. I went by for one reason one day and ended up um, getting an impromptu on-site interview. Mm -hmm. The company's name was Alight Solutions. It was a merger of Aon and Hewitt. I was offered a job the next day over the phone, and then I contingent upon a six-week background check, and they ran me through the hoops. And then a week before the training, the paid training was supposed to begin, the offer was um, rescinded. Is hmm. My comment is I should have started out at the Better Business Bureau because it did not have a rating. Uh, the... Uh, original two companies, Hewitt did have very good ratings, but that's, I guess that's something I should have reported to you. Well, possibly, last... uh, because if you're saying the bit, what kind of business were they? What kind of businesses are they? A call center for, oh, okay. he, uh, people probably know them better by Hewitt. I don't know anything about Aon. I think they're in the same okay. business. Hewitt's been around for a long time. Right. And they're a call center for employee benefits. So you call them with your insurance okay. questions and such. And because this is related to money, there's a statute, at least in Illinois, that um, they can ask, <coughs> ask you questions like that. So I did do a little bit of due diligence, but I felt very burned. And the yeah. time... And I'm sorry that happened, although in this situation, I don't think that would be something you would report to the BBB because that sounds more employment related. You yes. were trying to get employment and for you know whatever reason it, it fizzled. Uh, BBB cannot take complaints about employment matters. We just you know try to help people with and probably what you were seeing on their BBB report because consumers have problems. And as you all know, people are more likely to complain than to praise in most cases. Uh, but if a business responds to the complaints and tries to make them right, if they truly did mess up, that's what you want to look for as well. Um, you'll see A-rated businesses out there that are BBB accredited. They may be really large companies, and they may have a bunch of complaints. But, you know, if they address them, then that's the good thing. Uh, and that's what you have to keep in mind. And that's one of the standards in order to belong to the BBB. Not just any business can join. Uh, they have to make the promise to toe the line, conduct business ethically, respond to any disputes if they pertain to what's going on with them and the consumer. So if that's a little extra, uh, not playing the roulette wheel when you're trying to find somebody to put a roof on your house or fix your car. 
Cynthia, you'd need to talk to your state uh, employee de yeah, uh, department. That would be a thing. Joan Morris, it is your turn. Yeah, hi. I just wanted to give a couple of tips on avoiding some of the scams. Thank you. Uh, sure. One, some people in their in their families will have a safe word kind of a thing that if somebody calls and asks for money or something, you you ask them, well, you know, uh, what is our safe word? Mm -hmm. And if they don't have it, then you know it's a scam. And one quick, easy way, I just got a the grandmother scam. Oh, huh. said, oh, this is your your grandson calling. I've just been in the hospital and I need some money. I said, well, who is this? Your oldest grandson. I said, oh, is this Sam? He said, yeah, I have no grandchildren named Sam. <laughs> That's great. I love it. Good job, Joan. I'm glad you brought that up. You know, the grandparent scam does not fall, but it's very, it's very prevalent. And it can be used with other family members using those names. But you're right. A code word is very good. Uh, we yeah. hear about the scam all the time and people do fall for it. Especially now because they can mimic people's voices. Yeah, the AI. Exactly. That can be, that's why the code word is going to be all the more important. Yeah. I am a, for some reason, member of the Los Angeles FBI Senior Scam Working Group. Have uh -huh. no clue how I got invited. And I that was the question I asked at our meeting on Thursday. Is there an uptick in the grandparent scam? And they said not only that, but all of the scams mm -hmm. because of AI. So I was interested in all of the scams. Yeah, that's and something to keep an eye on. Yeah, it's it's going to be really a new ball of wax with that, really. Yeah. Andy Kerrigan, your solution uh, for us. Uh, no, no solutions. Number one, Heather, thank you very much. Great presentation. A uh, couple of quick questions. Number one, um, what value is there to some of these scam prevention or detection services, late night TV or email, whatever you see things on, mm -hmm. uh, title lock. So mm -hmm. your house doesn't get uh, sold, to, you know, get transferred to someone else. Or the credit cards, uh, pay $10, $15 a month, identity theft protection. And then kind of a corollary to that, if something happens, an account gets hacked or you get scammed, where do you start? Are there any guidelines that you have out on BBB? Let's say my email account or my Facebook account or whatever got hacked. How do you recover from that? It can be very difficult. And that, that, that's a whole nother topic for a whole nother day. But you're right. As far as some of those services you see online, first, I would check you know, for either protecting title lock, which I'm not totally familiar with how that works. Um, what, what is the one that... Uh, you can protect uh, your life your, lock. Life lock. That's it. Yeah. And I don't know what I'd have to look them up, but at first I would look up those businesses with the BBB and see if they, you know, if they are accredited, if they are, that means at least they're conducting business properly, but you can also educate yourself by reading what other people have said in complaints or reviews so that you don't have the same pitfall because sometimes they're just misunderstandings. Some of those things offer services you can do for yourself. Mm -hmm. For instance, you can put fraud alerts on your credit report for free. You don't have to use another company to do it. Uh, but some people just like the convenience of having all that available. I know they offer some sort of, you know, what, million-dollar policy protection, on, but who knows what you have to go through in order to get that. It's a matter of whether or not it's worth it to you, just like buying a warranty on something, you know. So do check out their reputations with that. As far as where to start, well, things with Facebook, that's why it's dangerous. You've got to set your privacy levels high. So it makes it harder for people. And unfortunately, some people put too much stuff on Facebook, which is why people end up falling for the grandparent scam like we were just talking about. Um, idtheft.gov is a site operated by the Federal Trade Commission, idtheft.gov. As far as if you lose your identity or something like that happens to you, and the BBB has referred people to that site a lot, has loads of information on dealing with issues having to do with ID theft, lost or stolen information in all sorts of different scenarios. So I would recommend taking a look at that site too if something like that happens to you. Andy, what group do you belong to? Uh, Brookdale Computer Users. Uh, you might want to have John check the Speakers Bureau list. We have several uh, presentations about what you're talking about, okay? Okay, thanks. You're welcome. To both, you and Heather. <laughs> uh, 
Many of your bureaus also have speaker programs. If you belong to other groups, you could reach out to that bureau to ask to speak to whoever handles community outreach. Uh, sometimes they can conduct uh, visits or, or Zoom meetings like this or come in person uh, if you're interested in that, for whether it's a church or, or another computer group or whatever it might be. Good to know. Uh, Mary, you're on. Well, I almost got fooled one time because the hospital a uh, representative from the hospital called me and said, oh, we're so sorry you missed paying $100 on your bill. And I thought, what? I don't owe $100. And uh, they said, but you can take care of it right away if you just want to give me your credit card and we'll just mm -hmm. take care of it. And I thought, I'm not doing that. I'm calling the hospital. So I did get off the phone and called the hospital and they said, you don't owe anything. And I warned them, I said, well, there's a scam going around where they're calling people that probably were patients or something sometime. But that is uh, troublesome. Yeah, how they got your name, and it could be an internal job, too, or something like that. That's that, what we wondered. Yeah, it was yeah, kind of yeah. pretty. That's, kind of that's the first time I've heard of that one. I just added it to my list. Thank yeah, you. they're not going to call you. They're going to send you a bill. You yeah, know, they got a million people they're billing. You know, they're not going to be taking time to call. Joanne, yeah. you're on. We can't hear Joanne. She is muted. Please. I'm mute. I'm sorry. Thank uh, you. Nope. I, I have to give her permission. Oh. So God, no, I, was not checking, off, I was checking on Judy telling me to close the chat box, and it's almost time to open it back up again. <laughs> is it okay to pull it? Your turn. Okay. Thank you. Great presentation to everyone, especially um, to um, Heather. Um, I want to know, has the Better Business Bureau been hacked? What, what do you mean? Or is there something, what do you mean we've been hacked? Did you? It, no, I, I just want to know if it's capable of being hacked. The computer system, all your data. Oh, oh. Well, that, that is something on the national level. I will say this, though. Sometimes con artists will often inter use the BBB name to be impersonating. Okay. Yeah, because people trust the BBB name. So that's another name some of them want to use. In fact, and I'm glad you brought that up. We talked earlier about the publisher clearinghouse sweepstake scam. Uh, we have heard instances where people said, oh, yeah, somebody called and said they were a publisher's clearinghouse and that the BBB was on the line listening to guarantee that this was all real and on the up and up. Oh. So, yeah, in that regard, yeah, but, oh, they have very protective issues on the website. But, yeah, yeah, so they'll use our name, too. So, and if you're not sure if somebody claims to be with the BBB, you're certainly welcome to uh, contact by phone and ask if somebody's calling you for some reason. Maybe you filed a complaint and we're trying to reach out to you or or if there's somebody using our name for something hinky like that that you know we wouldn't do, we'd love to hear about it so we can warn others. Cool. Okay, thank you. Cool, good question. Good question, yeah, I like that. Jack, you're on. Yeah, thank you. First, uh, Judy, thanks for the uh, link. Um, if this question has not already been addressed, I'm wondering, um, Beyond keeping a file of bad guys, uh, does the BBB ever do anything else, like maybe refer scammers for prosecution? Good question. I'm, I'm glad you asked that. Um, we tell folks, too, that, you know, we're a nonprofit organization. They want us to go shut down a business. I'm here to tell you, I don't know about in your states, but even in this state, it's hard for people, for the authorities to shut down a business unless some, they've gone through lots of hoops and proven some sort of malfeasance or out-and-out -out fraud. Um, now, that said, I know that our bureau and some other bureaus have also done this too. We partner with our Attorney General's Consumer Protection Office. We have for years. They do have the authority in some instances to shut down a business. We have had contacts with federal authorities like FBI and such like that. We share information with them, complainants. Sometimes the Attorney General's Office will call us and say, okay, you know, we're getting some complaints about this too. Can you share what you have? And then we can use all that information to possibly build a case and take these people down. Uh, this happened with a car dealership a few years ago uh, that was just uh, doing all sorts of shady under the table things with money. And the attorney general himself came to our offices, had a big press conference. So, yeah, uh, we can't we do work hand in hand with law enforcement to assist with things like that when we can. We want to be good partners in that regard. Okay. 
Thank you very much. Tom. Uh, thank you, Ms. Clary, for the fantastic presentation. Uh, and thank you, Judy. Um, in reference to Google being your friend, uh, since late 2022 and early 2023, unfortunately, anything using the Google Ad AdWords platform, and that includes Google search results, yeah. has had a dramatic decrease in trustworthiness because the AdWords platform is being horribly abused. Mm -hmm. um, so you would be very wise to use an alternate search engine that may use the Google results, but not Google AdWords. I have two uh, persons in my circle uh, with losses uh, over a thousand dollars. They searched for one search for an airline and wound up on a uh, dirty travel agency that I think has an F minus with the BBB, um, which has been in business for decades, uh, which I cannot understand. Um, and another one was a person trying to do a Norton renewal, ended up in a screen share situation and had um, the Norton cryptocurrency wallet cleared out as well as other fraud. Uh, so watch out, um, yeah. pay really close attention on the search results for any platform. If it's labeled an ad, go on. Uh, watch, yeah. and, and it's much, much less prominent and much, much less clear than it was several years ago. Yeah, and I'm glad you brought that up too. That That's good. Um, when I said Google or Bing or whatever you wanna use, as far as looking up news items, you know, to see if uh, that's what I will do and see if it comes from a news source, like what we were talking about earlier. But you're right. You can't just go on Google. More people get into trouble that way. Uh, you, we've you, have, you have two yeah. itty bitty little characters on the left-hand side of a text, line, a text link that is an ad that looks like a common search result. And, and you know, you just have those two little things that are, are microscopic on the left-hand side. And they thought they were doing the right things um, and hassles ensued. Yeah, and it, like postal service earlier when I said that was one of the ones that are impersonated. One thing, in fact, we had this come up a couple of weeks ago. Someone called, they wanted to change their address. They were moving. So they got on Google and typed in, you know, postal mail change address. Well, up came ad said, change your postal address with the U.S. Postal Office, but it wasn't the post office. One last thing for the gentleman you a wanting... bunch of money to do that stuff. Yeah. One last thing for the gentleman wanting to know where to start on a fraud or about the other protection issues. Your home insurance, either on the standard state form or as riders, has an incredible number of resources, often at much, much, much more economical rates than the third-party services. 